Jim Knowles couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. For weeks he'd heard strange noises in the backyard, but he brushed it off, thinking it was all in his head. When his children began mentioning the same odd sounds, though, he knew it was time to dig deeper. The mysterious whirring seemed to come from the large tree that shaded their yard from Nevada's relentless sun. At first Jim dismissed it, but with his kids now hearing the same thing, he had no choice but to investigate. Determined to uncover the source of the noise, Jim approached the tree, ready to face whatever was hiding beneath its branches. What would he find? The strange noise lingered in Jim's mind as he stared out at the old tree. Dad, did you hear it again? asked his daughter. Molly. Jim nodded slowly. The sound seemed to come at night low and constant, like a distant hum. His son Ben agreed. It's creepy, he added, glancing nervously at the backyard. Jim didn't want to scare the kids but knew something was off. I'll take a closer look tomorrow, he assured them. The next day, Jim walked around the yard, circling the tree. He pressed his ear to the trunk, expecting silence. But there it was, the hum, faint but unmistakable. He tapped the bark, wondering if there was an animal burrowed beneath. Yet nothing seemed out of place. Could it be the wind, he mumbled. But there was no breeze. Confused, Jim decided to wait and observe. The mystery gnawed at him, but he wasn't ready to act just yet. At dinner, Jim shared his findings with his wife, Sarah. The sound's real, he said. It's definitely coming from the tree. Molly and Ben exchanged worried looks. Do you think it's dangerous, Sarah asked, frowning. Jim shrugged, unsure. I don't know, but I'll call a tree surgeon tomorrow. Maybe it's just something harmless. As they finished dinner, the noise echoed in the back of their minds, an unspoken question looming. What could be causing it? That night Jim tossed and turned, his mind unable to let go of the strange sounds. Every time he closed his eyes, the hum seemed to grow louder, invading his thoughts. He got up and looked out the window, seeing the old tree standing silently under the moonlight. Why now, he wondered aloud. After all these years, why had the noise only recently started? He sighed and returned to bed, but sleep didn't come easily. The next morning, Jim called a local tree surgeon named Mark, who arrived later that afternoon. You said there's a noise, Mark asked, eyeing the tree with skepticism. Yeah, coming from somewhere around it, Jim explained. Mark pressed his ear to the tree trunk, listening carefully. After a few moments, he stepped back, his brow furrowed. I hear it, he admitted. But I've never come across something like this before Jim's curiosity deepened. What now, he asked. Mark walked around the tree, scratching his head. It's not termites, that's for sure, he said, crossing out the simplest explanation. Could it be underground pipes, Jim suggested, though they both knew it was a long shot. Mark shook his head. There's nothing around here like that. Maybe it's just the roots shifting. But even he didn't sound convinced. The hum was too strange, too mechanical for anything natural. I'll keep investigating, he promised. As Jim and Mark examined the tree, Sarah stood at the kitchen window watching. The sight of them pacing back and forth made her uneasy. Do you think we're safe here, she asked when Jim came back inside. He hesitated before answering. I don't know, but we'll figure it out. Her concern mirrored his own. The house, the yard, the tree, it had always been their sanctuary. But now it felt as though something darker was lurking. Over the next few days, the strange noises intensified. Jim could hear them even during the day now, a constant hum that seemed to vibrate through the ground. Dad, it's louder, Molly said one evening, standing near the tree. Jim clenched his jaw. Whatever was causing this wasn't going away. The sound was becoming more pronounced, more insistent, as if something beneath the earth was waking up. Tomorrow, he decided, we're taking serious action. Are you sure about this, Sarah asked as Jim prepared to cut down the tree. It's been here for generations she loved the tree, and so did the children. She couldn't imagine the yard without the beautiful big tree shielding them from the sun. Jim nodded. I don't see any other option. 
Something's not right, his words hung in the air. He didn't want to admit it, but the strange noises were starting to affect him. Sleep was becoming harder, and his nerves were frayed. Maybe it's nothing, but we need to know, he said, gripping the saw. However, before cutting it down, Jim decided to try one last thing. He borrowed a metal detector from a friend and scanned around the tree. If there was something metallic underground, it could explain the hum. As he moved the detector around, it beeped furiously near the roots. Found something Jim muttered. Digging a small hole revealed nothing but more dirt. The beeping continued. What's buried here, Jim wondered as the mystery deepened even further. Jim's search with the metal detector didn't reveal anything conclusive, only more frustration. It's not making sense, he told Sarah that night. She looked at him, her face tense. What if we're disturbing something we shouldn't, Jim tried to laugh it off, but her words lingered in his mind. The thought of something unknown beneath their yard unsettled him. Whatever it is, we'll get to the bottom of it, he assured her, though he wasn't sure how. The next morning, Jim made up his mind. The tree had to come down. He arranged for Mark to help him with the task later that week. In the meantime, the noise seemed to grow louder, filling the air with its unrelenting hum. Ben came running into the house one afternoon, pale-faced. Dad, the ground. It's vibrating, he said. Jim ran outside, feeling it too. It was faint but unmistakable. It's happening again, Jim muttered. Word about the strange noises spread through the neighborhood. Neighbors began to stop by, curious and concerned. You hear anything new, asked a man from down the street. Jim kept most of it to himself, but people were talking. Some thought it was just underground water. Others whispered about old military tests. Theories flew as the humming persisted. But Jim knew, deep down, that something else was at play. There's more to this, he muttered. As the day to cut down the tree drew nearer, Jim couldn't shake his growing anxiety. The noises were relentless now, creeping into every quiet moment. Are you sure about this? Sarah asked again, standing next to him by the window, staring at the old tree. Jim clenched his jaw. We don't have a choice. We need to know what's beneath it. The weight of the mystery felt heavier than ever. But there was no turning back now. The night before the tree was to be cut down, Jim barely slept. The hum had turned into something deeper, almost like a vibration in the walls of their home. Sarah lay awake beside him, equally tense. Jim, what if she started but didn't finish? Jim sighed. He understood her fear. Something unnatural was beneath their yard, and tomorrow they were going to uncover it. Tomorrow will bring answers, Jim whispered, more to himself than her. Morning arrived and Jim met Mark by the tree. Ready, Mark asked, positioning his tools. Jim nodded, though his stomach churned with anxiety. The noise seemed louder today, almost as if it anticipated their plan. As Mark revved up the chainsaw, Jim held his breath. Sarah and the kids watched from the porch, worry etched on their faces. The first cut into the tree echoed through the yard. Everyone flinched as if something was awakening beneath. The chainsaw tore through the thick bark and Jim felt the vibrations in his bones. The hum intensified, now almost a rumble. It's like the tree is alive, Mark joked nervously, but his face was pale. Jim's hands tightened into fists as each slice into the trunk seemed to make the sound louder, angrier. Molly covered her ears. Dad, what's happening? She yelled over the noise. Jim didn't answer, his eyes glued to the tree as it groaned. As Mark reached the halfway point, the chainsaw suddenly stopped. What's wrong? Jim asked, stepping closer. Mark wiped sweat from his forehead. It just dot 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 stopped. It's like it hit something. Jim's heart raced. Something inside the tree mark shook his head. No. Underground they exchanged a look fear and curiosity battling for dominance. I'll go get a shovel, Jim muttered. Whatever was beneath the tree was stopping them from finishing the job. The question was why. With the chainsaw rendered useless, Jim and Mark began digging at the base of the tree. The further they went, the louder the rumbling became. This isn't normal, Mark muttered, his hands shaking as he dug. 
Jim didn't respond. His mind raced, wondering what could be beneath their yard. The soil was dense and cold, almost unnaturally so. Then Jim's shovel hit something solid. Clang. He froze. What dot dot dot, what is that Sarah called from the porch? Jim didn't know. Jim knelt down, brushing away the dirt to reveal a large metallic object. It was smooth and round, like a hatch. Mark, look at this, Jim said, his voice tight with shock. Mark leaned over, his eyes wide. What the hell is that Jim didn't answer? His fingers traced the edges of the metal, feeling a strange warmth radiating from it. This isn't just roots, Jim muttered, his pulse quickening. We've uncovered something, big. They continued digging, revealing more of the metallic surface. It was circular, about five feet in diameter, with a handle in the center. Is this some kind of bunker, Mark asked. Jim shook his head. Not any bunker I've seen his army experience had taught him to recognize military structures, and this didn't fit the bill. The humming noise seemed to come from within the hatch itself, vibrating through the air. Should we open it, Mark asked hesitantly. Jim stared at the hatch, heart pounding. His gut screamed that whatever was inside wasn't meant to be found. Dad, be careful, Molly called from the porch, her voice trembling. Jim nodded, gripping the handle. It felt warm, almost alive, under his hand. He glanced at Mark, who was pale and sweaty. We're in this together, Jim said, forcing a grin. Mark swallowed hard. Let's get this over with together, they pulled the hatch open. A deep hiss escaped as the hatch opened, releasing a gust of cold, stale air. Jim peered inside, his flashlight cutting through the darkness. There's a tunnel, he whispered, disbelief in his voice. The tunnel stretched downwards, disappearing into the earth. Mark gasped. This is no bunker, he said. It's some kind of. Passage Jim's mind raced. What had they uncovered? We need to go down there, Jim said, adrenaline coursing through him. But not alone. Jim called his old army buddies, Greg and Sam, explaining what they'd found. You've got to be kidding, Greg said over the phone. No joke, Jim replied. Hours later, Greg and Sam arrived, wide-eyed as they saw the tunnel. This could be military, Greg said, inspecting the opening. Or something bigger, Jim nodded. Armed with flashlights and rope, they descended into the dark tunnel. As their boots hit the stone floor below, Jim's pulse quickened. What awaited them? The tunnel was narrow, damp, and lined with smooth stone. As they moved deeper, the humming sound seemed to surround them, coming from the walls themselves. This isn't natural, Sam muttered, shining his light ahead. The tunnel split into several paths. Which way, Greg asked, his voice tight with tension. Jim stared at the branching tunnels, a deep sense of foreboding settling in. We stick together. Left, he decided, though he had no idea where it would lead. As they moved down the left tunnel, Jim noticed writings etched into the walls. Do you recognize these, he asked, pointing them out to Greg. Greg squinted. No, but they look. Official, as in government, the humming grew louder, almost overwhelming now. Jim felt a strange pressure in his ears. We need to keep moving, Sam urged, his voice tense. Jim nodded, but his instincts told him they were getting closer to something. Something they might regret finding. The tunnel opened up into a large underground chamber, filled with machinery that hummed with an eerie life of its own. What is this, Greg whispered, stepping forward. Jim stared, wide-eyed. The room was filled with old equipment, dusty but intact. This looks like. Government tech Sam muttered. Jim's heart raced. Area 51, Greg asked, half-joking. But Jim wasn't laughing. The pieces were falling into place. We need to call the authorities, Jim said, his voice firm. When the authorities arrived, they took one look at the chamber and immediately ordered everyone out. This area is restricted, one officer said, pushing Jim and his friends back. Your property is being closed off. You'll have to evacuate, Jim's heart sank. Evacuate. But this is my home, the officer's face was expressionless. It's no longer safe. 
Your family will be relocated, Sarah looked at Jim. Fear in her eyes. What have we gotten ourselves into? That evening, Jim and his family packed up, watching as officials swarmed their yard. Military trucks and equipment arrived, blocking off the entire area. What do you think's down there, Molly asked, wide-eyed. Jim shook his head, unable to answer. As they drove away, he glanced back at the tree, now a pile of wood. And the mystery of the tunnel haunted him. Whatever lay beneath their home, it had changed everything forever. We'll find out one day, Jim muttered. Jim couldn't sleep. The house they were relocated to was smaller and quieter, but his mind raced. He thought of the tunnel, the strange machinery, and the evacuation. I can't just leave it like this, he muttered to Sarah. She shook her head. We need to stay out of it, Jim. It's not safe. But Jim's gut told him there was more. He grabbed his phone and texted Greg and Sam. Meet me tonight. We're going back. Greg and Sam were waiting for Jim outside his new house, flashlights in hand. You sure about this, Sam asked, glancing around nervously. We need to know what's going on, Jim replied. He tightened his grip on the backpack filled with supplies. They can't just take my home. Greg nodded, his eyes determined. Let's do it then. But we need to be careful. They'll have security all over the place Jim took a deep breath. We'll be in and out. The men parked a mile from Jim's property, moving quietly through the desert night. There Greg whispered, pointing to the guard stationed at the front. We can't go that way, Jim nodded and gestured to the side, where the old fence lined the property. We'll sneak around. They crouched low, weaving through the shadows. The sound of the wind howling through the trees made it feel eerily like the noises from before. This feels wrong, Sam whispered. Reaching the edge of the property, Jim pulled out wire cutters and made a small opening in the fence. One at a time, he whispered. They slipped through their eyes scanning the yard. Security lights flickered nearby, casting long shadows over the place where the tree once stood. Do you hear that? Greg asked, stopping suddenly. Jim strained his ears. The humming sound was back, faint but present, coming from the ground. It's still active, Jim whispered. Moving silently, they reached the now-covered hatch. They sealed it, Sam said, kicking the dirt that was piled on top. Jim dropped to his knees, brushing the dirt away. We can still get in, he muttered. They dug with their hands, feeling the cool metal beneath. Hurry, Greg whispered, glancing around. The hatch groaned as Jim lifted it, the sound louder than they had expected. Go, go, Jim said, ushering them into the tunnel. They were in. The tunnel felt colder than before, and the hum reverberated through the stone walls. Jim flicked on his flashlight, the beam cutting through the dark. Where are we heading, Sam asked, his voice tight. Jim didn't answer. He was too focused on the path ahead, leading them deeper into the underground maze. The symbols on the wall seemed more ominous now, glowing faintly as they passed. This place feels alive, Greg whispered. Jim's gut twisted with fear. As they turned a corner, the glow of flashlights suddenly filled the tunnel. Down Jim hissed, pushing Greg and Sam to the ground. Two men in military uniforms passed by, their conversation hushed but urgent. Did you hear what they said, Sam whispered. Jim shook his head. It's something big. Something they're hiding they waited until the men were out of sight before continuing. We need to see what they're guarding, Jim muttered. His heart raced. This was dangerous. The tunnel opened into the same chamber as before, but now it was fully illuminated, with equipment buzzing around the machinery. Look at all this, Greg whispered, staring in awe. Military personnel moved around, monitoring screens while others worked on the machines. In the center was a large cylindrical device, humming with power. What is that thing, Sam asked, his voice shaking. Jim's eyes narrowed. Whatever it is, it's not supposed to be here. They had to move fast. Jim led them closer, hiding behind stacks of crates. He spotted a blueprint pinned to a wall. 
It's a generator of some kind, he whispered. Look at the output, Greg gasped. This could power. Entire city, Sam shook his head. Or something else entirely, Jim's blood ran cold. They've been using our land for some kind of secret project. His mind raced. This is military-grade tech. We need to get out of here before they find us. Just as they were about to leave, a loud alarm blared through the tunnels. Red lights flashed, and the personnel snapped to attention. They know we're here, Greg shouted. Move Jim hissed, leading them back into the tunnels. Soldiers flooded the area, their footsteps echoing behind them. We're trapped, Sam panted, glancing over his shoulder. Jim's heart raced. No, we're not. Keep moving, but deep down he feared it was too late. They had seen too much. The tunnels twisted and turned, but Jim's army training kicked in. He navigated them through the dark, listening to the soldiers' footsteps grow louder. We can't outrun them, Greg gasped, clutching his side. We have to try, Jim urged, pushing forward. Suddenly a flashlight beam caught the wall beside them. Over there a soldier yelled. Jim's stomach dropped. We need to hide, he whispered, pulling them into a narrow alcove. The soldiers passed, but it was only a matter of time. Jim motioned for silence, holding his breath as the soldiers' voices faded. We need to make it back to the hatch, Sam whispered. Jim nodded. If we can get out, we might still have a chance, but as they crept forward, a soldier's voice barked out. Their flashlights blinded them. Run, Jim shouted. They bolted, racing back through the tunnels, dodging soldiers. The hatch was in sight. Go, go! Go, Jim pushed Greg and Sam up first, his heart pounding. As Jim scrambled out of the hatch, the footsteps of soldiers echoed in the night. Go, he yelled, sprinting toward the fence. Greg and Sam followed, adrenaline coursing through them. They vaulted over the fence just as soldiers reached the yard. Get down, a voice shouted. The three of them ducked behind a nearby hill, their chests heaving with exhaustion. We barely made it, Sam gasped, staring back at the property now swarming with soldiers. Jim wiped sweat from his brow. We're not done yet. In the end, the Knowles family was relocated to a larger, more modern house in a nearby neighborhood, courtesy of the military. Sarah marveled at the new space, but Jim couldn't shake the feeling of unfinished business. Why would they move us here, he asked, pacing the living room. They're hiding something big, Jim Gregg said when he and Sam visited later. Despite their new home, the mystery of the tunnel still tugged at Jim's mind. We need to go back. Late one night, Jim, Greg, and Sam snuck back to the old property, only to be caught by military guards near the sealed tunnel. You've crossed the line, an officer said sternly. You've been moved for your safety. Do not return. They were let go with a final warning, but as Jim walked away, the hum of the tunnel still echoed in his mind. No matter how comfortable their new home was, he couldn't forget what lay beneath that tree.